welcome to our special evening of the Riverstone. Um, good to see you all this evening. I'm just going to start by uh, reading from God's Word here, um, John chapter 3. John chapter 3, we're going to read from uh, um, verse 5, so I'm going to go forward. It says, Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to the flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to the Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. It's just that picture of how when we're born, we're born the first time of water, right? Because obviously the mom's water breaks and, and the baby's born. But um, a person is born a second time when they put their faith in Christ. And that's when they're um, born of the Spirit. And God gives us His Holy Spirit to dwell with us to believe. And so um, that's the message that Jesus gives there. Let's just start with a word of prayer. Father, thank you so much for this amazing evening. It's a very special evening in the lives of uh, Callie and Nicholas. I thank you, Lord, for them and the work that you've done in their life and the way that you've uh, caused them to be born again. Or not just of water, but also of the Spirit. We thank you, Lord, that, <laughs> that they're making that publicly known tonight by following you in obedience to baptism. We just pray this be a very special evening for them. And we thank you that the church can gather like this together and, and worship through singing. And we just pray that as we're worshiping and, and reflecting even upon the commitment that, that many of us have made long ago, um, that we want to follow you and that, that we've been born again of the Spirit. Uh, Lord, this is a reminder, too, of the, the commitment that we made in a public place when we were baptized. And so, Lord, I just uh, thank you for this evening, and I pray your blessing upon it. In Jesus' name, amen. Please stand with us.
then, like, okay, how I kind of got into church again is over the summer I felt like as though something in my life was missing, but I couldn't quite like pinpoint it until I had some really annoying friends that I love so much encourage me. Um, <laughs> encourage me to get back into church and try going again. Of course, in 1980, you go, I said no. I didn't want to go because I had lost faith due to not maintaining it and some other things that happened to me over the years. And like it just made me feel like he's not there. I thought and like I thought and felt as though God had stood me up, walked away from me, and maybe even came from me. For me, there was no trust, no faith, no belief. I was left with the question of where do I go? Earlier in this year, I had lost a friend. He took his own life, and that hit me really, really hard. I didn't really, I didn't know what to do. I was at a loss in my life, and I like that. I was so confused, and I kind of just buried it and buried it and buried it under sports and school and friends and whatever, and I just completely hit it and forgot, tried to forget. And then it just ate at me the whole time. And even coming back to church, I was new to church. And then this September, another one of my friends passed away in a car accident. And it was also very hard, but this time I knew what to do and I knew where to go. Obviously, eventually I gave in the church, tried it, tried to hate it. Loved it, went in with a closed mind because that's what I do. Well now, you know, how did I get here? You may ask yourself if I have such a closed mind. Well, I got in my car, drove myself to church, and I haven't left <laughs> ever since. That was, that was the day that Pastor Don was talking about repentance and turning your life around, which was exactly what I needed to hear. And it was exactly what I needed to do. The second I left the service, like I left the second the service was over, so then nobody could talk to me. I would go and be blessed. Up, up, up. <laughs> and I just like I just kind of needed to be on my own to process what had like really happened. You know, after a long time of pushing it away, <coughs> pushing everything down. I finally had faith and feeling in my heart, and that day was my turning point. I cleaned up my act and my attitude, and I'm not perfect, but now I know in my heart I'm trying my hardest to be the best version of myself. I've always opened, I've opened my heart to God and accepted Him into my life. I struggle to find the right words to describe what changed in me, but it's for the better. I have never known what I wanted in my life, but now I do. The Holy Spirit is present in me, and I trust in God to guide me through my life.
name is Nicholas Roy, and I've been in Christ Church my whole life. Uh, and I accepted Jesus into my life when I was around seven years old. My siblings had just come home from youth, and they're teasing me that I was dead. They're better now. <laughs> so I went to talk to my mom, and I said the prayer. But my my main motivation was hearing my sibling song. So. Not a whole lot changed, and I didn't give that part of my life a whole lot of thought. And then, I went to Camp Little Red, around 2018, I was around 11. And I observed real Christians, and started to question how I was living. And then, over the next few summers, during camp, the Lord stirred in my heart to change, and stop living for myself, and what I wanted. Then, in the summer of 22, I started working as a maintenance. And I started getting to know the Lord and really why I needed to be saved. And that I can always grow more. And I see that another step in my growth is to get baptized. And Jesus got baptized before he started. If I should be like him, I feel like I could also be baptized. A few months ago, God put on my path the question of how I wanted people, how I wanted to be remembered, seen as that people who won't just see me as a guy living for myself, but as a person who desires to do what God wants or what He needs. Thank you. 
in the scriptures, uh, in, in Matthew, right at the end, Jesus, uh, before he ascended, he left his followers. And he, and he said, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So very clearly one of the things we're taught to do is, uh, is, is obviously to obey the, the Lord. That's why we call Jesus Lord. And uh, the first thing that the Lord told us to do is to, to be baptized and to baptize people. And so, so that's what we're, what we're doing here. And Callie, would you come up and uh, be the first one? So as Callie comes up, I'm just going to ask her a couple of questions. I'm, I'm going to, uh, well, you we need to do something. <laughs> you can take them on. That's fine. You don't have to take them on. You want to wear your socks. That's good. <laughs> you want to sort of get in and see how, how warm the water is there? But, um, it's pretty warm, actually. It's not too bad. It's a lot better than... Back in the old days, they used to just kind of hole in the ice at this time of year. And, um, the pastor would have to get in there, too, and that wasn't so good. So I'm sure glad we got this set up a lot better. Um, I'm going to ask Callie a couple of questions, and the first question I'm going to ask Callie is I'm going to ask you, have you, um, by faith, chosen to make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior? Do you have? And do you intend to follow Him all the days of your life? Do you do? the help of the Holy Spirit who has given us to do that. So, if you just want to get down on your knees, or actually, maybe, maybe sit in that, certainly not on your bum, actually. And we're right up to the kind of the front of the tub the there. Um, now what you need to do is you need to take your uh, your hand and your, your hold, hold your nose and then and then hold the other one with your grip. Hold this this hand over your wrist. Gives me a place to grab. And so so Kelly, um, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We're buried with Christ through baptism. Raised to walk in newness of life. So he was one who was sent out to share this 
good news of the gospel with people all over the world. And uh, Peter, of course, was one of the 12 disciples. And Peter had some issues. Like, there was a time in his life when he was so proud of himself and he thought, even if everybody forsakes you, Lord, I never will. I will stand with you to the very end. I will always be there for you. And then, of course, the night Jesus was betrayed, Peter got scared and fear overcame him. And he denied the Lord three times, just like the Lord had, had told him that he would. But then after that, God gave him, and I talked about that with each of our candidates, that with the help of the Holy Spirit, you will be able to follow him all the days of your life. Because without the help of the Holy Spirit, all of us would fail miserably, and we still struggle, and we still fail. We, none of us are perfect. Um, we're still a work in progress. I love that, that shirt that says, please be patient with me, God isn't finished yet. Because, because we're all a work in progress. But with the help of the Holy Spirit, we'll be able to faithfully follow Jesus all the days of our life. But the bad news is what I just want to briefly talk about here. And that's where Peter, God is working with, through him in a, in a powerful way. And he's preaching this very important message uh, to a whole bunch of people. He doesn't even know most of them. This massive crowd of Jewish people. And he's preaching to them. And um, he, uh, we, we pick it up in verse 37. Or uh, verse 36, actually. It says, Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. Now that's the bad news. Because think about it. Who crucified Jesus? Who literally nailed him to the cross? Well, wasn't it the Romans? The Romans were the ones. It was actually the Roman soldiers who were literally the ones hammering the nails into his hands and his feet and, and propping him up on a cross. So wasn't it, wasn't it the Romans? And then you can maybe make the case of, well, maybe it was the Jewish authorities, because the Jewish authorities were the ones who put so much pressure on, on uh, the Romans to, to follow through with this crucifixion. So maybe it was, maybe it was the Romans or, or the uh, Jewish authorities who crucified Jesus. But Peter on that day is talking to just this massive crowd of people. Some people maybe didn't even know hardly who Jesus was. And then Peter looks at all of them and he says, Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus whom you, speaking to all of them, who you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. Now, why would he hold these people, all of them, responsible for the crucifixion of Jesus? Well, it's because it's the sin. It's our sin. It's everyone's sin. It was literally what caused Jesus to have to be crucified. That was the only way that we could have good news. And so that's the bad news, is that it's our sin that put Jesus on the cross. That is the reason that he was crucified. So when the people hear this, they're moved and they're like, well, what should we do about this? What should we do? And that's what we read in verse, verse 38. It says, um, um, it, it says, and, 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 um, verse 37, when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles. So have you ever been cut to the heart before? Have you ever felt like, I need to do something with this information? I need to do something. That's how they felt. They were cut to the heart. They were convicted. They realized that truthfully it was their sin that caused Jesus to be crucified. And so they were cut to the heart about this. And so they say to Peter, they say, brothers, what should we do about this? And Peter says to them, he says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. There it is. So, what I find interesting about that is that in another part, in the same book, in the book of Acts, a jailer is, uh, is, is miraculous, like, like there's this earthquake that hits his jail and it, and it causes all the prison doors to spring open and all the prisoners are able to, to flee and escape and, and the jailer thinks he's going to be in some serious trouble with the Roman authorities because he's let all the prisoners escape so much so that he's about to put himself to death. And he's so nervous and, and as he's about to literally kill himself because he thinks, if I get put before the Romans, they're going to torture me and put me to death anyways. I might as well just end my life right here, right now. But as he's about to kill himself, Paul, the apostle, calls up and says, stop, don't do it, we're all here. And then when this man realizes what's going on here, he's cut to the heart, and he falls on his knees, and he says the 
same thing that these people are saying. And he's like, what must I do to be saved? And there, Paul says, believe on the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. So what do we have? We have here Peter saying, repent and be baptized. And we have Paul saying, believe. Here's the deal. We need to believe. We need to believe that it was our sin that put Jesus on the cross. We need to believe that Jesus, the way that God made for us to be saved from our sin is through Jesus. And that's the one and the only way that we can be saved. We need to believe, and as an individual, we need to put our faith in that and that alone. And then when we do that, it's going to make a difference in our life. And we're going to all of a sudden want to do certain things that we've never wanted to do before. Like, get in front of a bunch of people, which by the way, they say that, that the thing that causes people the most fear over anything else is standing up in public and talking before people. So for these young guys that have gotten up here and shared their story with us, they overcame a huge hurdle of fear. What on earth would possess them to do that, right? Well, it's because God is at work in their life. It's because they have been impacted by the good news. They've seen that it was their sin that put Jesus on the cross. And they've seen that when Jesus died on the cross, he didn't stay dead, but three days later, he rose again. Amen? And when he rose again, right, that, that we can live again after death with him. Because he's conquered death for us through his death, burial, and resurrection. And so what it does is it causes us to want to let people know that this has happened in our lives. And how do we do that? How do we let people know that we've made this decision in our lives? You know, in some churches they'll say, well, if you want to become a Christian, just come on up and, and stand in front of everybody. Uh, some churches will say, well, sign a card. Some churches will say, raise your hand. Jesus said, be baptized. This is how you let other people know that this is something you decided to do in your life. This is my way. This is God's way. Is to be baptized, to, to, be, to be put in water. Now, why do you put in water? Well, it's a symbol. When the person is put under the water, it's a symbol that they died with Christ. That their sins have been paid for because he took the punishment for our sin by dying on the cross. So when they're buried under the water, we say buried with Christ through baptism. But then, of course, Jesus didn't say that. And we don't have to say that either. So raised to walk in newness of life, it's that new birth that Jesus offers and can offer because of his victory over sin and death through his resurrection. And this is what Peter says. Repent. Repent. I just want to touch on that briefly. Callie touched on it. Uh, that was great. But repent is basically when you feel like i got to do something about this. And basically what repent means is just... I've been going my way. And your way might not even be all that bad. You know, a lot of people think, oh, I don't know, I'm not that bad. I'm not really a sinner out there. But you don't, like, like, sinner literally just means to miss the mark. So, like, if you're an archer and you're pulling the arrow and you're shooting at the target and you're aiming for the bullseye and you miss just by a little bit, like, you don't hit the bullseye, but it's close, you still missed. And that's what sin literally means. It means to miss the mark. So if you miss the mark by a little, or you miss the mark by a lot, either way you missed, it really doesn't matter that you're a little bit closer than the other guy. So repenting is when we say to ourselves, we go, you know what, I've been going my way. And my way isn't working. I don't really think my way is the answer anymore. And I want to turn from going my way, and I want to be a one and I want to go his way, Jesus' way. Because he didn't just save us to take us to heaven when he dies, but he saves us because he has an awesome plan for our life. If we'll just follow him, one day at a time. And this step of baptism is just that first step in, in, in the course of many, many, many more steps that will come along. So let's pray. Father God, I just thank you <laughs> for everybody that's here tonight. And I don't know if everybody here has already made this decision to turn from going their way and go um, your way. You have a way for each of us, Lord. And uh, I pray that we would follow your way for our lives. Um, I thank you that for making a way, um, if that's the good news of the gospel, a way for us to be saved from our sin through Jesus Christ, through his death, burial, and resurrection. We thank you so much for that. And I pray that you just be at work in each person's heart tonight, Lord. If there's anybody that's feeling back to the heart like this, 
something they need to do tonight, and I pray that they would follow uh, Callie and Nicholas' example, and that they would make that decision for themselves. Lord, no matter how old or young they may be, maybe tonight is the night that they want to make that decision. We pray for that tonight, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. Spent a running to all the wrong places. I thought that I would be the last one that you'd ever want to see. I was so far gone, the kind of way you love on. But you are not the kind of God to ever give up on me.
pray in the Lord's Prayer. So let's bow and pray in the Lord's Prayer. So, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Make sure you say uh, congrats to, uh, to our baptismal candidates. And it uh, won't be long, and we'll have another opportunity for people to be baptized again. So if this is a step that you still haven't taken in your own life, I, I encourage you to seriously consider it. Have a great evening.